Hello friends, did you ever hear the name of John De Brito? What was his connection with Goa and India? Well, if you haven't heard his name, it's my pleasure to introduce him to you. He was a Jesuit from Portugal, born in 1647 and died in 1693. Okay, but what is so special about his life? Why we should know about him? Before I tell you his extraordinary story, let me remind you to click the subscribe button for more real stories on the lives of the saints. I am Father Nelson Lobo, your host on the channel. This is episode number 16 and you are watching Real Stories That Inspire Life. If you like this series, do leave a comment in the comment box on my YouTube channel. Friends, João de Brito was born of Portuguese aristocracy and became a member of the royal court at age 9 and a companion to the young prince who later became King Peter II of Portugal. You see, John was not an ordinary child from an ordinary family. Sickness and death spares no one, rich or poor. When de Brito was young, he almost died of an illness and his mother vowed to dress him in a Jesuit cassock for a year if he was spared. He regained his health and walked around the court like a miniature Jesuit. God works in mysterious ways. Maybe this vow of his mother became instrumental in planting the vocation seed. Young John decides to join the Jesuits. Despite pressure from the prince and the king, he entered the Jesuit novitiate in Lisbon in 1662 when he was only 15 years old. He wrote to the superior general in 1668 asking to be sent to the east as a missionary but had to finish theology first. He was ordained in February 1673 and left Lisbon for Goa in mid-March, arriving the following September. He studied more theology in St. Paul's College in Old Goa and was asked to remain as a teacher but he desired to be a missionary and to seek the glory of martyrdom. So he embarked on the missionary journey imitating his role model St. Francis Xavier. Father de Brito worked in Madura in the regions of Kole and Tatuvanchari. When he studied the Indian caste system, he discovered that most Christians belonged to the lowest and most despised caste. He thought that members of the higher caste must also hear about Christianity. So he decided to be an Indian ascetic. He changed his lifestyle, eating just a bit of rice each day and sleeping on a mat, dressing in a red cloak and turban. He established a small place of retreat in the wilderness. As he became well known, the number of conversions greatly increased, but he also became the object of hostility from Brahmins, who resented his work and wanted to kill him. He and some catechists were captured by soldiers in 1686 and bound in heavy chains. When the soldiers threatened to kill the Jesuit, he simply offered his neck. But they did not act. After spending a month in prison, the Jesuit captive was released. When he got back to Madura, he was called back to Portugal to report on the status of the mission in India. When he reached Lisbon 10 months later, he was received like a hero. He toured the universities and colleges describing the adventurous life of an Indian missionary. His boyhood friend and now king, Peter II, asked him to remain at home to tutor his two sons. But the Brito placed the needs of his people in India above the comfort of the Portuguese court. The Brito sailed again to Goa and returned to the mission in Madura in November of 1690. The Raja of Marava had threatened him never to return again, but here he was once again. His success in converting Prince Tadaya Teva indirectly led to his death. The prince was interested in Christianity. De Brito insisted that the prince could keep only one of his several wives after his baptism. He agreed to this condition, but one of the rejected wives complained to her uncle, the Raja of Marava, who sent soldiers to arrest the missionary on January 28, 1690. Twenty days later, the Raja exiled De Brito to Oriur, a neighboring province his brother governed. 
the raja instructed his brother to execute the troublesome jesuit that's how the amazing story of john de brito came to an end on february 4th the day of his execution my dear friends saint brito was beatified by pope pius the 9th on 21st august 1853 he was canonized by pope pius the 12th on 22nd june 1947 saint john de brito's feast day is on 4th february john de brito is dead and gone but his memory lives on the jesuits have built number of schools and colleges in his honor in goa we have the famous saint brito school in mapsa well that was an extraordinary story of a saint he could have lived a very comfortable luxurious life in the king's court in portugal but he chose to die for the king of kings jesus christ may god bless us with such courage to dedicate our lives for his service Thank you my friends for watching this video don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell button for more stories on the lives of saints thank you and god bless you